that. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> is a work of art. The way, the way it, the, the, the cameraman, the, the, the performance, the way it just goes back to him, to back to the stage, that is gold. Why do we always thank bouncers when we leave a club or or any place? Why do we thank because bouncers? It's, it, it's an inbuilt um, reaction to the situation. So you want their respect. R ridiculous as that sounds, that's what you want as you walk out. All right, mate. Nice one. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, yeah there's a, there's like an element of fear in it, maybe. Or it's, but it, yeah. I'm like, you guys. Oh, cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. What well, for keeping us safe? Well, I, I sort of walked past you. There's bits waiters in there that I've not tipped that have got nothing out of this exchange. Whereas you, you get a thank you on the way out. Funny, isn't it? It's a power dynamic. It's a pilot power dynamic. Right. So am I doing the right thing by thanking them or, or do I need to sort of take back my own power and go, yeah, that's right. You watch me leave. Do you, know what I mean? you don't say anything. You just walk out. But you are out. being subservient if you thank them. Right, yeah. And this comes from a man who, who is who does. I, I I do it. I appreciate that they are bigger and stronger than me, therefore could batter me, therefore fundamentally what they say goes. The thing is, right, in this modern era, people <laughs> have lost sight of the fact that fundamentally the biggest and strongest person in the room is the most important because if they disagree with your point, they can batter you. So it comes down to brass tacks. When it comes down to it, if someone is bigger and stronger than you, they will always win because if they want it to resort to violence, they can batter you. That is so. No matter how inter that's incredible. No matter how intellectual you, no matter how intellectual you are, or how right you think you are, if that person who's bigger and stronger than you decides to actually, I want to resolve this with violence. There's nothing you can do. So the bigger and stronger person in the room fundamentally is number one. That's just the way it is. Is that a power move like to me? You're just going. Just remember. I own you. That's essentially what you're saying. In terms of our relationship, because I'm small. No, is that not, what you're saying? Is that no, what this is? No, 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 not at all. No, no. What I'm talking about, James, what I'm talking about, James, is there are people out there with a lot of opinions who think their intelligence will get them out of situations. But when it comes down to it, if someone's bigger and stronger than you, all they have to do is switch it to violence and then it's game over, no matter how intellectual you are. Just to finish off on that, my, yeah. in, if, do you know what though? In a civilized society where you don't get to that point of like, well, hang on, I'm starting to lose this argument here. Bosh, right? That's when, that's when, in terms of the size or the violence that you can provide, I think in terms of being like lippy and quick witted, I remember being told yeah. quite early doors. You need to you need to sharpen up here, son, because <laughs> I was getting I was getting like a bit bullied here and there, and I was going you know you can imagine right. little poor little little tiny little Jim with his you know with his chubby cheeks and his round eyes round eyes, um, going why are you well, saying that why would you say that to me, and they'd go, and then one lad took me to the side and he said, mate you need to you've got to be better at taking people down verbally, and I was like okay, yeah and, um, no I. And I ruined his life. Not, ruined his life. This isn't a, this isn't <laughs> this isn't a critique of you. I'm thinking more no, generally and overarching. No, what I'm saying though is you're saying as an overarching thing, it's about size matters. What I'm saying is that if you don't have size, the thing that you can use as a synthetics element of size is being so lippy that you think you'll you'll win the exchange. The only way you'll win that exchange is if that, at no point do they get to the point where they go, right, I'm gonna beat you up. Yeah, so, so we're both right. Uh, a yeah, bit like, right. a bit like Gene Evan Carragher. I thought I really enjoyed their heated debate da, 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 last da, da, da. week. You enjoyed it? Well, so definitely both of them. I thought it was interesting, the fact that both of them, I sort of had a point, um, which I I later put to, um, Kira Maguire, who was very good. He was on TRE. Um, but I'm intrigued to hear what you've got to say because it's been a rough. Mm. It's been a rough time for Man United. How do we fix them? <laughs> I think that's what all YouTubers are thinking right now, isn't it? Yeah, that sounds a good title. Fucking millions of United fans all over the world that are tuning into this one. How do we fix Man United? Have we started, Jim? Have we started? I think we might have. Okay. Uh, how do you fix United? Um, well, the first, first point of call 
before anything else is getting rid of. Because all right, right. The first thing is it probably Has isn't going to get fixed. But... Has he got to go? One hundred percent, he's got to go. He should have gone. He should have been gone. Is he it a... on a beach somewhere talking to his wife? Right, but for... I just don't understand. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand why the players. <laughs> Darling, we're in 40 degree heat. Why are you wearing a turtleneck and a blazer? I just yeah. don't understand. Eric! Because in my mind, in my mind, I'm still on the touchline. Um, is, um, in terms of like, you know, we've done the old um, Tottenham. Could we? And we'll come to that later on. Is oh. the Eric Ten Hag out conversation? Are we, are we past the side cam? Is what I'm trying to say. Is are we still in a land where I'm going? Could Eric go? Should he go? Or are we just? Am I, I, I just looking down the down the lens again? Where, is it, so is where it time? Where I'm coming from, Jim, is that I thought that he wasn't right at the start of the season. That was after them finishing the top four, and um, in and winning the league cup. And that's not to say I knew anything or I know more than other people. I do clearly, but yeah, I, like if, if all I'm saying is I had a feeling at the start of the season. He isn't the guy, and I've never really been convinced by him at all. But that's something I've just had in me and when I'm thinking about him. I sure. thought he was an odd man before he joined, yeah. and I didn't think it would work when he did join, but he did go for a decent period, and they finished in the top four. So I go, well, the evidence is, is there. They finished in the top four. Ergo, he must be a good manager. Right. I wasn't convinced. When it started to fall apart this season, I was like, I was there. I was, I was Ten Hag out sooner. Than, than most people and it just didn't feel right for me and therefore I mean the last month has been absolutely atrocious for Manchester United and you know what happens don't you you know what happens when it's but it's Man United and that was more scouse it was much more scouse wasn't it yeah but the mm, it's Man United <laughs> uh, but you know it, the, the thing is <laughs> is good. that when people talk about Manchester United, they, they talk about them as if there's something else, as if they exist on the plane above all other teams in the Premier League, in football, right. bar in Real Madrid. And so it's, it's crazy to Sky Sports presenters and, and, um, and you know fans that this could be happening to Manchester United. I and mean, the reality of the situation is they're just a normal football club. We have a big ground with lots of people around the world that seem to watch them. A crown that's there is up. absolutely no guarantee of success. Certainly, when they have glazers, the glazers at the helm. But yeah, Ten Hag's got to go. He's got to go. There's no room for him to go. There's no room for him to to, to maneuver here. What okay. can he say and do to repair this? So uh, just to say, uh, if you want to become a patron, please do. Uh, a link is in the description. We do mailbags every week where we talk about bloody all sorts. Um, and I I spoke about what really happened on my Barcelona trip. You can go check that out. Uh, um, but we can touch on that. We've got some fantastic Ainsleys in the wild. We've got a big announcement, Flav, as well, about our weekend. Really? Yeah, about our weekend. Oh, yeah. Uh, can, I just, at, can I just say, for people watching new to this, they hear Man United fans, whatever the title's going to be, I'm not sure if James decided yet. But just stay for the Ainsley. If you don't stay for anything else, just stay for the Ainsley Harriet goal celebrations. If you're new, that won't make any sense to you. Trust me, if you respect my opinion at all, or anything I've ever said about, said about football. Don't go with that. <laughs> yeah, well, or you hate my guts because I've yeah. said something horrible about your football club. Just for that moment, just stay for the Ainsley Harry. It'll be worth it. Yeah, I want to talk about Man United, of course. I want to talk about a couple of epic reframes when it comes to Tottenham, who take on Chelsea in the Monday Night Football. I've got a new bit called Tries Talk. Stephen Try has been clapping at you again, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, we've got a new bit called A Great Man Once what? Said. Oh, actually, it's it's the second part of the uh, first part. I'll, I'll give you the first part. So this was from last week's podcast. A great man once said, this is Lol, who's come back with the second one. He said, it takes no wipes to know it will take 20. It takes two to know it took none, <laughs> which is great. Uh, new bit as well, which I think has got huge legs. Football assumptions. Things you just assume about footballers. We've got one about Raheem Sterling and one about Jordan Pickford. Uh, we've got a... Something revolving around the Alcott horn. Again, if you're new, this is something you won't know about, but we'll explain a little bit later on. And both a sweet spot and a sweet spot that has, from last week, that has turned into a story about a sour spot, um, which is an amazing story that we're going to end the podcast on. I absolutely love it. It's just a tough moment um, for 10 aloe vera. Right. Man United, as you were talking about. Oh, and first of all, 
I did want to say. So a couple of good comments. Samuel said, the absolute chaos that the end of this po- these podcasts brings is another level now. Will James batter through all the segments he has planned? Will Flav's interests survive the full hour? Flav's webcam dying again is a great throwback, though. I did think, uh, is the is the your webcam is it or is it possibly going to go or whatever it is your battery? Well, it depends how long. If we if we're going if we're doing a podcast that's an hour and forty minutes, then maybe it might go might go. Yeah, if we're doing an hour as we're supposed to do, then absolutely not. Everything is fine. You right. tell me, Jim. How long is this podcast going to be? Just, I enjoy your company. So, yeah. you know, just All right. Well, it might go then. Okay. Uh, James Moggy says, the stark contrast from the start to the finish of these podcasts never ceases to amaze me. Going from casual football chat to having a go on someone's beef and onion in a matter of minutes can only be found here. Uh, And finally, uh, just because Thomas is uh, in the chat, Thomas Mine, who, if you don't know Thomas Mine, he's just a wonderful singer and a wonderful man, and also the son of of Nigel Martin. Uh, Off the back of accusations from Vlav, who suggested that Arteta had no genitals, which actually led to the football assumptions bit. Thomas has said, I've heard rumours from Nige that while in the changing rooms, he saw that Arteta is indeed a Ken Dub. Only forwards. Well, he's only got a little willy or he's got no willy. I mean, no willy's ridiculous. I can't imagine he's... Ken Dub. Ken Dub, brilliant. Um, Can we ask Nige... uh, uh, Thomas, can you ask Big Nige, please? Who has... Who had the biggest package that he's ever seen in the dressing room? What? That not on, is it? It's poor, isn't it? That's so season one. Genuinely want to know. That's so season one. Yeah, Football but I just love the you, fact that... Not, trying to bring I back Thornton's like, wags. He's trying to bring Thornton's oh, wags. I'd love to. I know you don't like it, but I'd love to. The, the thing is, Jim, right, is, is what I like to imagine is Thomas making his way around to Nigel's house, big Nigel, and, and Nigel's on the sofa and he's probably watching Coronation Street reruns. And Thomas goes in the door and says, Dad, I've got this question for the pod. You know the pod. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I've got a question for the bud. Uh, who's, who's got the biggest wang you've ever seen in football? And I like the fact that Nigel just takes time to contemplate the answer and then goes, it's this person. I yeah. want that to happen. Um, no, we can leave it, Jim. That's, I mean, it feels like... Well, you've set it up now. So uh, I presume Tom will come back soon. Footballers' wangs can happen to you. Happen to you. <laughs> Look at Jim. Look at me. He's seen two. Tells. God bless. Tells. All right. That's what tells, didn't I? Right. <laughs> Uh, I've been thinking about Man United. I did a video on them yesterday, so I'm, yeah, I'm more interested to hear your thoughts. So, what I will, you said, as long as the Glazers are here, Man United can't be successful. No, well, they can. Oh, okay. But I, I think for United to return to where they came, where they were at previously, it can never happen because this, sustained success needs leadership from the from the very top. And um, you mentioned what is sustained success to a Man United fan is league titles every other year, and in order to get that, it needs to be it needs to come from somewhere other than just having a good manager. That's a great um, question. What is sustained success for the different clubs? So Tottenham, what is sustained success? For Tottenham. I mean, it's it's one league win, <laughs> one in a decade. That's what I was thinking. It, so with Man United, I mean, sustained. No, you're so it's like a top between. It, it, between one and si- top six finish and three bits of tin, that sustained success for Tottenham. What it, 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 for for the next ten years? Yeah. Well, look, it's, so it's a good, a good, quite a great question, right? Because it's, it's where are the men, where where are you? What mental space are you in as a fan base? And it's it's, it, it's directly correlates to what's gone before. So, obviously, under Daniel Levy's tutelage or, or, or leadership, we uh, to Daniel. <laughs> nah. we we um we have not won anything right so therefore the expectations are lower in to, to some degree for some people um but with united they all these fans have grown up they've all grown up they? yeah they've all grown up winning trebles and yeah that's what they've watched and the arsenal fans are the same they've grown up watching Thierry Henry and the invincibles so what their idea of success is isn't reality. It's not something that can be right. replicated very right. or replicated ever again. And so there'll always be this expectation that they probably will never reach. Tough life. That, so what man. is it? So what, in, in order to answer your question, if we win five bits of silverware, which is a massive <laughs> ask, that is a massive, <laughs> massive ask. <laughs> you know, you can see the comments. Can't you just getting? It's like a video printer. You haven't won anything ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But sustained success is something that we've never experienced, right? Yeah. Not not in the modern era, for sure. Not right. in the Premier League era. So I would say that if 
given the way Tottenham are now set up in terms of the amount of money we ge- generate and the, the, the caliber of player we can attract, I would say that the idea of the sustained success is closer than ever. But doing it is one other thing, 100% one other thing altogether. Okay, we'll come back to Tottenham. Uh, in, uh, for our beloved patrons, please, 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 write in the chat right now, for the club that you support, what is sustained success? Here's a thought I've got on Man United. You know, you know, everyone goes, "This is Man United." At what That's point? What about. At what point is this Man United? This is this Man United. This is this. this is what they are. That's what I'm trying this to say. Is you. This is Man United. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, James. Stop sitting back. Yes, it's just to sit back and then go go. <laughs> right. I, no, right. This I, is you're, that, you're, so. This, this so is, you're saying this is Man United. But the, but <laughs> the, 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 you're nothing but what you are right now. This is what I'm saying. Is when, when, <laughs> that suits so you, though. That suits you. Exactly. Because, <laughs> but, but, but bearing in mind, James, is, is, is I've got, for years, to this day, I still get Spurs uh, uh, fans of my club going, yeah, but you're Tottenham. Yeah, but you're Tottenham. We know what Tottenham are. Yeah. You don't. Because no, what we, Tottenham no, are right now. Yeah. yeah, what Tottenham are right now, this is Tottenham. This Everything is Tottenham. else is irrelevant. Everything else is irrelevant. It's the same thing with Manchester United. This is... This is Manchester United. United. Wow. And this will be Manchester United until you get a chairman in or an owner's in that have a different idea of what, of how to run a football club. That it goes beyond simply throwing money at transfers. Okay. How do you feel about what Kieran Maguire said? Price of football. He said it with his chest. I really must say, if you don't listen to the ripple effect, I feel like this is one of the best podcasts we've done. And it was just literally a simple interview with Kieran Maguire. And obviously it's good because he's great. But I was thinking, oh, will he be very sitting on the fence? And we spoke about Everton and 777 and if that's a good idea or not. And he said with his, he said, he said that Everton would be better off if that deal doesn't happen. And then when it really? came to Man United, I said, because I was interested, like when a team isn't doing well, it is, it can feel convenient to... Uh, to get get annoyed with the ownership. Like, that's what we see time and time again, right? So I was sort of asking that question broadly, you know, it, as someone who sees problems with ownership and what that would like look like, does that actually kind of trickle down? And so for Man United, is are the Glazers a fair excuse when Gary Neville's saying what he's saying? And Kieran Maguire said, he said, it is fans blaming... K- the Glazers is a convenient excuse because oh, yeah. So he was saying that it's not up to the Glazers to make Man United successful on the pitch. If you think of Sheikh Mansour, he doesn't go to games. He's not really, you know, obviously he's interested to a point and there's a lot of bankrolling, but his ultimate thing is to provide a budget. And this is where it fell down a little bit. And I kind of pushed back on it. He's like, and then to hire, a couple of people and they will they get on with it and so if you think yeah. of man uh, man city Sheikh mansour is nowhere near it ever and no one cares because they're winning and because he's put in place people that run the club and he allows them to do it and they, they do, do it, well. it successfully yeah exactly so so i think I, I don't agree with him because i think your job is to make sure you get those right people in place and as kieran Maguire yeah. said himself those people are rugby people like they're they're not they're not people who've like been in La Masia and learned from Johan Cruyff yeah. but like in terms of that day that day to day element about. of it it's not on the Glazers is it so that's no. why I think Carragher's right no, no, as well no it's not look, yeah no no no, no. Look, look I'm not saying I'm, fundamentally if the fish stinks it stinks from the head right so that's that it, because that's why that's why ultimately all of the issues will, will come back to the glazers because they're making the overarching decisions to uh that, that impact every aspect of the football club is the fact that manchester united are dog poo this season down to the glazers no but they have some overarching responsibility to why they're in this situation yes because it's been consistent more or less consistent failure since they took over, well, since Ferguson left, right? More or less, it's been, it's been, they've been underperforming under their tenureship. But to this season is all on player recruitment and Ten Hag, all of it. 
Because the Glazers are not going, well, Anthony, I'm not sure about Anthony. There might be a better alternative in the Serie A that we should look at. They're not saying that. They're going, well, you, know, you guys know football. Here's the money you need in order for it to happen. That happened. They paid 100 million euros for Anthony. Ten Hag, Anthony was Ten Hag's um, winger at, at, at Ajax. Yeah. That happened. Though that, that correlation isn't Martinez, who is a good good defender, right? But that although these accusations accusations definitely certainly come from Ten Hag. If you're a Man United fan right now and think that that everything that is going wrong this season is completely down to the Glazers, then you are naive in the most extreme. Because and you have to look at uh, at Ten Hag because that whole they look lost and unhappy. And don't want to play there. And the fact is, somehow you've ended up with Johnny Evans and Maguire in a back four playing together regularly this season. How in God's holy fuck has that happened? And also, we've got you, you, you signed our fourth choice left back who hasn't had a sniff at Tottenham for two years. And he played oh, last he played. night, he played. So, yeah. what is going How have you arrived at this situation? That's what you need to be looking at right now. Yeah, yeah. I think as well, like people, you smell. He's like when he's saying he can't play like Ajax, like he he's he totally screwed up with his first season by one doing so well. And actually, there's some good comments on this. Actually, I've got a couple. They're doing so well, but also like he like should have been at that time that he made all those changes like the amount of like i asked i didn't know the answer but i was wondering there were four different but it's players from four different managers five managers if you look at the whole squad who played in the league cup game yesterday and the pro the problem is that you have with that and that's that's something that qpr are going to have now because we kind of went to ainsworth and now we've gone back to marty fuentes who is you know He's a Barcelona boy like myself. So he's going to be able to deal with that. Don't, let's not concern ourselves with that right now. But the fact that you bring in Martinez, Onana and Anthony, and then you tell me you're not going to play, you don't want to play football like Ajax. That's his fucking nonsense. Does he say he doesn't want to? He cannot. He and if he not, cannot, yeah, he why says, not? Haven't, we haven't got the players, blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, but again, you have to like, the, you start with the philosophy of play. Like that's the first thing you decide on, you and identity. then you build the blocks within that. This and is the problem. This is what, what everyone's saying, done. James. He's put it off and he put, put it, it off and put it off. But it doesn't look like there is anything going on. It doesn't look like there's an idea or what or a style of play. But th- I think that's and, and because now he's it's, and whatever that's he's, he's given, failing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because that's my point. Is because he should have done that last year when he had complete carte blanche to to rip it up. And he's not ripped it up or, or like, or maybe that's where like the recruitment is an, a problem in this where like he's could have gone like, uh, you, look, if you go through the squad, like a year ago, there's so many of those players that you could have got rid of and aren't the right profile for Ajax football, let's say. And because that's why we, that's why I thought he was the right guy. But what I'm struggling to see is the way out because I can't, He's not leaning into a very clear style of play. He's just playing. And do you know what I watched? Do you know what I felt sorry for yesterday? People will scream at this and they'll think I'm talking rubbish, but I, can't, I can only say what I saw. Mason Mount was in all the right spots sh- with his hands out, showing for the ball all the time. And time again, it was like the moment to pass. Now, 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 now. He doesn't get the ball. He doesn't get the ball early enough and he hasn't got a good enough players around him. If you get a manager in there that puts in an actual clear-cut system, I promise you Mason Mount will thrive in that in that team. But until then, he's not a player who can do it on his own. He can't do it on his own. He's not that kind of player. He's going to be the centre of any kind of rebuild at Manchester United. He's one of the ones you want to keep hold of. Yeah. <clears throat> um, George, yeah he's... Say you were going to rip it up now, right? Let's rip up Man United right now. And this is the problem where you've got to get to January now. That's, that's, the, that's, where, that's how managers lose their job is because you get you start off and you go, oh, shit, we've still got... They've got a horrible month. We spoke about that on the Ripple Effect. We're saying that they had an absolute disaster of a month coming up with the Champions League games that are going to be difficult and other games around that that could lead to them being in a horrible, horrible place. And we're not even at that point yet. So they need to kind of get themselves sorted out. But yeah, if you look at the squad and you're ripping it up now, surely you think you go... Who is, let's go age, 
Who is between the ages of, I don't know, 19 or 18, even if you want to put um, Garnacho in there, and 26 that you believe is good enough to win, to have sustained success, like we're talking about, right? And anyone who's not, get rid of them. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's difficult for a manager to be that involved in outgoing players. It's not, it, it isn't, I don't think it's on Ten Hag to say, you have to get rid of this player. He, he could say he's not going to play, but it, it's. It, I, I think he wanted Maguire gone, but it's got to a situation through injury or other, other reasons that Maguire has to play. But it, I, yeah, I mean, it, there are some things that you can't necessarily lie at Ten Hag's door, but fundamentally he has to oversee a complete sea change in the playing staff. And Ben just mentioned something in the comments there, Ben Bowman saying like Tottenham, Man United are too proud to have a window like Tottenham, Tottenham had. I think that Man United signing the players we had, they would have been underwhelmed. It, they want to be spending huge money on, on, on these, on, 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 oh, on big players. Underwhelmed. Yeah, that's true. That is true. But then, like, but you should have smarter, These players would you? have improved them. It would have improved them. Um, I don't know. Do you know what? I think that's, that is the problem. That's what Carragher's saying, which I agree with. I think we've all said it, kind of, is that he is looking so bad. So, I mean, one thing to say is that he's played Man City in Newcastle. Like, <laughs> I bet there's part of him is like, these are two good teams. Like, And, yeah, and Newcastle get, smell get, blood. They want revenge. They've got to focus about them. But, Newcastle made eight changes. Yeah, but that so but again in terms of squad building, that's that's the thing. Say with Newcastle, right? With that squad building, you've gone he'd gone, right, oh we've got loads of money now. Okay, right, what do I need? How do I want to play? Yeah. Okay, I'm mm. gonna need these players here and there. And yeah. in terms of an unlimited budget, they, they starts from that, doesn't it? Yeah, but they've they they've worked within FFP, right? And they've gone profile. What's the profile? What's also, the profile? Yeah. What's the profile? What's the profile? Whereas Man United, that's what I mean. Because it's like it it's from such Eddie House saying this is the way we need to play. These are the players in order for us to be effective. It doesn't seem to be that at Man United, Jim. That's exactly what you're saying. Yeah. Look, but, what, what's the difference? The main difference between the two last night, other than the fact that Newcastle dropped eight players, a manager that has an idea, a system, and a path laid out in front of him that, by his own creation, and you, one who's just sitting in the middle of a field not knowing what to do. But see, and again, I think that's why I keep coming back to this, the start of last season is where he should have gone, I'm never going to be able to do what I want to do unless I get the kind of players I need. And that's where Newcastle have that joined up thinking with Dan Ashworth, where the recruitment does matter. But it's when you do, you can't, you can't get people on three year deals and then, then start to try and fix it all. Like you should have done, like that should be your first thing to do. And we're going to get through this season. We might finish 11th. But as long as the fans know, we know, and you can see what they're trying to do, then you can live with that. You uh, mentioned something crucial there, Jim. Dan, the word, the name Dan Ashworth. Mm. Manchester United don't have Dan Ashworth. Newcastle, when they got all of this money, they thought, what do we need in terms of player recruitment? And it, I'm not sure exactly when he joined, but I know he joined from Brighton. And Brighton were really, like, they were gutted that they had to lose him. Because Dan, Ashwar- Dan, Dan, Dan Ashworth's ability to run the football, the, the football inside of the football club is crucial. And Manchester United haven't had someone like him to oversee the football inside of things. Eddie Howe and Dan Ashworth together are an excellent team that is not sexy, that Man United fans and many other clubs would not look at and go, oh, we need Eddie Howe and Dan Ashworth. But Newcastle go about things without the arrogance of uh, uh, some other teams. And they're just willing to get the right people in for the right positions. And as you say, Jim, they've, they've bought pri- players by profile. What do we need? What job do we need them to do? Yeah. And that's why they can make eight changes at Old Trafford and go and absolutely pummel Manchester United. But I also, I also believe that Tottenham and Newcastle currently have squads that are excited. Like, and obviously they're excited to play games. But, they, they, yeah. but it's... it's like Newcastle is like the Red Arrows at some points, and then Tottenham is just fun. It's a fun, aren't they? Just a fun club to watch. But that With fun you. comes from dominating the ball. It does but come having from shots, having yeah. shots on goal. Exactly. <laughs> I can't tell you. But like, how nice how, it is to have shots on goal. But if you own the game. And that's why yeah. if with Fifuentes, again, you know, I've done a video on it. You can go check it out. The guy's a Who is genius. this Fifuentes guy? Is he the new QPR manager by any chance? He's the, he's the next Johan Cruyff, is what I'm trying to okay. get across here. Good. Um, good, good. Which is good because I have an affinity with Barcelona. 
Um, but yeah, he's, oh, well, his his whole thing is about. It's funny that how QPR have gone so far for a possession based manager, and the the one critique with him is that he like is super possession based, like to the point where it could get dull. Which like I don't really want that, but but. I'd rather live in a world where we've got the ball than we haven't. It is Mate, excruciating. It's... You know, you know Tell from me last it. year. Tell yeah, me it about is it. Horrific. So yeah. that's that is another thing that I I can't get my head around. That in the whole period that he's been there, with the four hundred odd million that he's spent, they've spent. That obviously, obviously, especially if you've got people that you're not sure if they really know what they're bloody talking about. Surely you would lean on Ten Hag even more. And then he would get exactly the kind of players that he would want to, to help him out. And that would lead to a team that dominates the ball. That's what he had with Ajax. Constant like crosses, constant, you know, domination of the ball. And I get it's like a different league, but you should be able to buy generally a lot of good best in class players because Man United are an attractive team. So that's that's what I keep coming back to. It's like it's not I'm not actually bothered about now. I'm sort of going, Oh, I thought you had your shit together. And you haven't, and it's too. I feel like it's too late now. A little bit. Like, can yeah, he get? No, can he get scary... through this? Can he get through this? I don't know. I mean, I mean, you've seen this a million times play out. If he needs to win, I think he should be gone. But he needs to start winning and quickly. And that's an obvious thing to say, but they don't look like it. So, uh, no, I think he's done. I think mean, dead man walking for sure. It's who they bring in, and I'll give you a name, Jim. I'll give you a bloody name. Gareth Ainsworth. I wasn't thinking Gareth Ainsworth, but it's a similar sort of profile in terms of style of play. I'd say Antonio Conte. Get him in there. <laughs> Get him in there. Because if you feel like, if you if you think you, if Man United fans feel like they, they think they know what misery feels like, you yeah. wait. I you do, wait. I tweeted it yesterday. I think maybe there's something in this. Um, start again. They need to start again. David Moyes. Get him back in the club. Give him an yeah. opportunity. You know, you're clearly well, not good with the ball. Do you know the weirdest thing about all this is, and this is this is going to be upsetting to Manchester United fans to hear, or they'll just think I'm a bit of a CUNT, right? But it's getting to the point where I don't really care about Man United. I don't think about them. I, honestly, ouch! It, it, indifference is. It, I'm becoming indifferent to Man United's existence, and that is mental to say because as a kid, I would fear them every time Man United turned up. I thought there is no chance. I'm not even. There's no point in me even watching this game because I'm just about to watch my team get battered. Now I feel absolutely nothing when we play Manchester United, and that just shows you under Glazers that has happened. Okay. Uh, Sam Threadgold said, "Man United so sustained success for Man United is the odd trophy or league and always competing." Thomas Martin for Everton says, "Staying in the league for now." Um, there was a Wolves one. Where's that? We had a Wolves one. Wolves, I think it was being in the conversation for Europe. It's sustained success. Uh, Aloe Vera. Wait, we'll go, oh, we've got... Neil, what? Well, Gary, mate, I, I, I did want to... I, I was happy to touch on that. I, what I would like to do is I don't want to get too deep into the poll without tucking into a bit of Ainsley, Hat celeb- Ainsley Harriet celebrations. All right, um, let's do that. But what I will briefly say is... Yeah. Wh- how many games before we need to apologise to Gary O'Neill? <laughs> I think it's, we should uh... apologise to him already. Yeah. I, I, I like... And 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 especially the Bournemouth fans, and I know they were like some of them that they, he kept them up and they were happy he was gone. Fundamentally, you know that we know that that they 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 fought him, but because he's named Gary O'Neill yeah. and not Ariola, he's like, oh well, you know. And I felt that as well. I thought it was right yeah. to get rid of him. I Me thought too. he was rubbish. And um, lo and behold, he's all right. He's doing well. And. It might be a certain element of recency bias, but you can you you've got to take him on what he's done. He went into that Bournemouth job after Scott Parker had absolutely thrown his toys out, saying this squad isn't good enough to stay up. I need loads more money, and he took over it and didn't complain. Saw the opportunity and kept that club up. I know they spent a little bit in January, but he kept that club up. And how did they repay him by spitting in his face? Mm. You're not good enough, Gary, because your surname's <laughs> O'Neill, yeah. and that's why. You're out. And Wolves gone. Well, we're fucked. Who can we get to come in and help us? Gary O'Neill goes, uh, I'll do it. They get Gary No in, beating Manchester United, uh, Manchester City, getting results all over the place. No one wants to play Wolves right now. No one. Got the best out on Neto. Neto's probably one of the best wingers in the game at the moment. 
Mate. Everybody should apologise to Gary O'Neill. He deserves it. And I'm, I'm saying this before his sterling appearance on Monday Night Football. Yeah, I mean, I do feel like that's really given him a little bump up. It's helped him massively. And he and didn't do you know say much. Do you, know what, do you know what's really important to say is that <laughs> we weren't sure. Uh, it, this was the quote, remember? We're delighted to welcome Gary to the club. He's a highly motivated young coach with strong principles very th- and, and very well thought of. And we were thinking, mm. hmm. Mm, doesn't, that means that, that sounds like nothing. That means you're not really up to it. But turns out he's a highly motivated, and incredibly talented young coach. Well done, Gary. And I'll always, like I'll always, it'll always have a place in my heart because he got sent off the professional foul to keep the R's in the playoff final, of which we went on to win with the Bobby Zamora last minute screamer. Indeed, I like this from Tom Jordan. Uh, Tom Jordan's our resident Bournemouth fan. Has his own YouTube channel if you're interested in Bournemouth content. But uh, Tom Jordan says, let's see walls without Neto. See what you oh! don't need to be. Listen, listen, Tomo. You don't need to be bitter here or reactive. You said you're not good enough. You're not good enough for us. We're going this way. You can't then be bitter at him achieving at the new club. That's that's poor from you, mate. Tom is funny, though. He did, he did say earlier on, we were talking about um, blaming the I, Glazers. If I, not, he said, why didn't Joel Glazer just block the Lewis Hall shot? <laughs> <laughs> very good he's very spiky character isn't he Tom Ooh, very spiky. He's, got, he's got the gift of the gab he's like me you know it's a similar thing we co- we're, we're, we're going to struggle when it comes to fisticuffs because we're short kings so we've got to have a bit of chat that's all we got right um, uh, Ainsley Harriet celebrations now yes. uh, if you have hung on to this point and you are new to the podcast let me explain uh, a few weeks ago, I went to a lovely event, and at the event, there were lots of famous people at different tables, and they they had cameras on everyone, and it was this sort of live stream thing, I guess, and they went to different people, and at one point, they went to Ainsley Harriet, and Ainsley Harriet sort of, um, it looked like he was doing something a bit naughty, sort of like he was holding something, and Which, shaking it all so about. So the cameras and pointed him, there was a big screen, right? Was there, yeah. was there a big screen and the oh, cameras yeah, went to Ainsley Harriet? Four or Harriot. five big screens all around so everyone could four see. Four or five it. big screens. Yeah. yeah. And other people had done what? They'd just sort of nodded at the screen when they'd like been that. introduced. Like... Yeah. yeah. And then he goes to Ainsley Harriet and what does he do? He goes, he went, he got the, he got the saucepan out and he shaped it. And he used the hips as well. He put the one hand behind the back and he chucked some stuff in there. And then he had a little dip tucked into the sauce and carried on a little bit more. And it was gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, that is, and, and bearing in mind, this isn't a, like a cooking event. This is a football event, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is a, a we were we were paying homage to Ian Wright and uh, Emma Hayes. <laughs> <laughs> right, there you stuff. go. Yeah, brilliant. He was sat right. next to um, like I don't know, Alan Kerbishley or something like that. Anyway, what, 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 what did we call for? We called for people to do it. We, what we deep down was we want a professional sportsman. And if you are watching, you know who you are. You messed me on Instagram. I've not forgotten, but we've got to wait a little yeah. while for, the, for their season to start. But we'll look forward to it. But if you are in the professional space and there is a camera knocking around, let's see what you've got. Now, last week we showed a couple and they were brilliant. And uh, if you want to see more after these two, go back to last week's podcast. Near the end, I think it was. Yeah, where but we this isn't them. over. We want more. We want, we more. want more. This and uh, do you know what? I did think, right? <laughs> I'm not sure I've even said this right. So, quick announcement: myself and Flav will be on. Why have you? Why are you saying that and then that? <laughs> because I think we should do it. Not fucking not doing it on Sky Sport. I, we start. We're not. What are you on about? No <laughs> so, chance. So what, us on Sky Sports and what is this? <laughs> Smashing it out. Yeah. I don't why not? Get back on. Maybe not. Well, so okay, me and Flav are on Saturday Social this Saturday, which um, which I, I don't want to give the whole running order, but there's going to be a combined eleven debate, which is going to be hilarious because oh, I'm going to be ju- I'm going to be judging it. Um, so yeah, but I'll and be the guy, I'll be the, guy the guy we're with, the Chelsea guy that isn't Rory Jennings for the first time ever. Uh, right. There's another Chelsea guy. Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't met him before, but he won't know. I, I'm presuming he won't know us, and therefore won't know that fundamentally well, you're on know my me. team. Does know me? He knows you too. I think oh, he knows right. you too. Knows of you. I was in. Yeah, he was in Barcelona. Last Is he week. a nice guy? Have I, have I mentioned that? The, oh, right, okay. Yeah, he's cracking Blake. Really <laughs> lovely. So yeah. Anyway, I'm look. I'm, keep watch us. Uh, if I can sneak it in, I'll sneak it in. It might have to be a timid one. What? Well, so we're doing a stop the buzzer. So if I win the stop the buzzer, maybe I'll, I'll end up doing the uh, <laughs> celebration. Let's see. Put, oh, man, see if we people... can sneak in. If we win it, if we, I tell you what, I guarantee, if I win the uh, stop the buzzer, which I'm rubbish at quizzes, then I will hundred percent stand up and do it. 
that's you're safeguarding yourself there because uh, you'll just you'll just lean back, won't you? Oh, we'll see if we can sneak it in. We'll see if we can sneak it. In. So yeah, uh, watch Saturday social because I think it might be in a bit that's not clipped up. I'd imagine. So uh, so yeah, but anyway, you guys have uh, got yours in, which is great. Also, uh, later in the podcast, we will. Uh, there's um some sound effects from different places. Oh, hang on, I've pressed play. There's sound effects from different places, and someone's um got a sound effect that someone makes. Which we'll, anyway, we'll come to that. So uh, first of all, we've got. Let's do Reese. So, oh no, let's do John John. So John John, I, I really like. So, okay, here we go. Sorry, mate. Slugs in the wild. Share your screen. Share my screen. Yeah, here we go. Tuck into that. Uh, right. Here we go, guys. Here we go. Get your slugs in the wild. Send them to me on. Oh, I've seen this here. one. Have you not? I feel like you've got one that I haven't seen. So, uh, uh -huh. slug in the wild. Met my man Luke a year ago. However, only learned he was a fellow slug today. For Halloween, we unintentionally oh. went as similar but different costumes. I'm a chicken tikka masala and he is Linguini from Ratatouille. Did the Ainsley Harriet celebration oh. to commemorate such an occasion. Have a great week. Best content creator on YouTube. Thank you, mate. Very good. Uh, okay, here we go. So uh, do you yeah. want to critique this one? Seeing it for the first time, replay it. Okay, I haven't seen it. Here yeah, go. go on. Not happy with that. Not happy with the sauce. That's, I mean, that's only more. Oh, it's swapping. Is it? Is it a double? Yeah, there's the chicken masala. Oh, that's, that's much better. There you go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's getting a bit weirder, though, isn't it? Like, it's getting like, I don't, it's weird enough as it is. I didn't need the dropping of the knees and the post orgasmic space. But yeah, yeah really good. It's interesting because really, what I like. Go on. Go on. Go, yeah, go, yeah, go, yeah, go. I, I just like it when people. Um, they're waiting for the camera to start. So in this awkward position <laughs> where they're just having to wait and then they have to start. My enjoyable, enjoyable bit. Yeah, I liked, I liked the fact that, interesting, so first person, but, so so here's where he's lost his way for me. He's, well, he's licked, look, look, so right, cooking the sauce, yeah. he's, he's licked yeah. his finger first. Yeah. He's, licked, he's licked his finger first there. That's, that's mental. I think, <laughs> I think he's, trying, he's, he's panicking and he's trying to get everything in and forgotten yeah. really the order, order of things. Also, it's there's not enough jeopardy here. They're, they're, they're like no one's watching. No one can see them do it. it. It's just they're just mucking about on a dance floor, which is fine. But if you're gonna, you need to oh, you need to to put your back into it if you're gonna do right. Because like, and that's why goal celebration is... would be so good, wouldn't it? Because everyone's watching you because you just scored and you've wheeled away. Exactly. So to then do it when everyone's looking at you is, is class, isn't it? Yeah. That's yes. Good shout. That's so, really and this is what I'm saying. If Saturday social it happens, then. That's, I mean, the jeopardy there is that you've got a million people on Sky watching you. I don't care. I'll do it. I'm going to try and do it. So here we go. I mean, so he's had a bit of, and he's not happy with the look of that. He is, dis, he is not happy. And again, but it's confusing. No. He's going, he's going, yeah, it's okay. But he's also saying, no, I don't like it. Mm. So he's, he's all at sea, if I'm honest. I don't think he's enjoying the camera, but he's done it anyway. So I appreciate it. So we move on. And he's like, get me out of there. Get me out of there. Get me out of there as quickly as possible. Get me out of there. Take this. Take this off me. But uh, one and man's, what, one man's pleasure. There to stir rather than it be. What? Very good yeah. point. Yeah, yeah, very good point. Waste Sorry, of a spoon. I don't need to be this critical, but it is important to us that yeah. this is done correctly. But one man's poison is another man's pleasure because uh, the second guy dips in straight in. And he About two it. fingers he as well. Enough. Yeah, really got in there. Yeah, two fingers. Two, two fingers. <laughs> you have to work up to two fingers. Don't just use two fingers <laughs> straight away. Jesus. Steady on. Right. Steady on, yeah. Okay, so that was the first one, and then Reese. So this is mental, firstly, and this might oh no, this might oh, this might have been a while back, but um, sh uh, strictly speaking Japanese, I was uh, not spoken, but a slug in the wild spotted at All Points East Festival during a Chemical Brothers set, tucking in to Jaffin. <laughs> just just watching it, Oof. loving it as well. Look. What? <laughs> I've never seen that before. Great pan. His face is great. He's absolutely submersed in a bit of Jaffin. Look, look at his face. Little pout there. Loving it. <laughs> Surely that's a wind up. They know each other for fuck's sake. That is amazing. I love that. Must be. This one. Is, so he says not the, not the world's best Ainsley Harriet, but given how crowded it was, I did it. I did what I could. And I felt like this one. Hang on. Shut up, you. I thought this one 
I uh, this guy's really cool. Check it out. Great, great pan as well. Look at him. Look how cool he is. Just takes his time to the yeah, beat of the music as good. well. Really good. Really nice. That is really and the nice. sunglass as well. That's that is class. Isn't it? That, that's that is ten out of ten. Let's watch that again. It's, the, it's everything. It's everything. It's the Look camera work. Just in time, he's moving to the time of the music. Yeah, he's happy in the to the stage. He's yeah. happy. Do you know what's right. crucial here? What's crucial? I didn't realize it. And it's it's everything. It's the whole thing. It's he's, everything. He tastes. He doesn't just taste the sauce. He tastes the sauce. Right. Watch. Yeah. He's happy with it. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah. That is and do you know what? I like the way he looks away from the pan, the imaginary pan. He, like, he looks away from it just so it's not he's not influenced by it. So he looks away at standing. <laughs> yeah. 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 Don't want to get sucked in by the sauce. I want to taste the sauce. Take away that sense. That, yeah. honestly, <laughs> is a work of fucking art. It, the, the way it, the, the, the cameraman, the, the, the performance, the way it just goes back to him, to back to the stage. That really is good. gold. I absolutely love it. Love it. Great work, guys. More. More, 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 and we'll see if we can sneak one in. But uh, it will probably be a quick one. I'm cooking, lads. Something like that, maybe. See what we can do. Okay, great stuff. Okay, where are we? And how long we've we been going? Because I've, I've been we've chat too much these days. All right, let's do Tottenham. But what I, what I would like to chuck out there. Again. What I would like to chuck out there. I mate, just mate, you got to enjoy this while you can. Well, I will just chuck out there Liverpool. Well, could they? Yeah, Li easily. Much Liverpool. more likely than Tottenham. Much Liverpool. more likely. Liverpool. They're down there further down the road. Do you know what they've got? This is what I said. It's what I bloody said, right? They have answers. They've got goals in that team. Yeah. Arsenal, can I be honest? I don't really enjoy watching them at the moment. I, well, the, I did put what I mean. I, you know, I've got ways. I'm happy to talk about this, Jim. You know what I mean? I just, it's all I'm, I'm fine with talking about this, but I want to talk about Liverpool more so. But I, my feeling about Arsenal this season, despite them being second in the league, they were joint top. Not that that's the thing, uh, but now they're second, like officially. Mm -hmm. I, I just is they're, all, they're compared to where they were our last season. It's just a bit meh. And big game this week, and, Newcastle. And, yeah, massive game. I mean, and, mate, and maybe they're more, more effective. Maybe they're more built to win the league this year than they was last year. I think so. But are they as good a football team? Don't know. And also, was Rice really worth one hundred and five million pounds? I don't know either. Um, I'm not yes. saying he wasn't. Yes. I'm just asking a question before I get attacked again. Okay. Is, the answer is yes, is it, Jim? All right, yeah, we'll see. So. The end of the season, we'll see. Maybe I'm wrong. I think Maybe I'm wrong. You judge, you did, judge I... Rice in five years' time. No, I'll judge him right now whenever <laughs> I'll I want to. Yeah, I'll judge him when I want to. Yeah. I mean, um, do you know what, like, but you beat Chelsea, mate. You got Chelsea at home, right? Mm. <sighs> we got hard, next hard, hard games now. Chelsea, Villa away. No, Villa at home. Manchester United away. Oh, so Chelsea away. Chelsea at home, oh. Villa at home. Okay. United City away, and <sighs> and then Wolves. I can't remember the the right order, but that's more or less what it is. Get through those though. Like I said, Matt, what, uh, so we said there's a ripple effect as well. When when are Tottenham title challengers? And it was decided by the lovely Harry Brooks that if you can get through this period of games and you're still top of the league and you're playing Man City, should they? It's on. Do you think if you get to a point where you can win the league, there's any chance of it? There should be a TIFO of me and you saying, could they? <laughs> I feel like we deserve that by the end of it. Yeah, we've reined it in now um, on the fighting cock because it's getting a bit like it's just over. It's getting overdone. Right. I think. But okay. we, we, we stopped doing it. But but the um, but yeah, I mean, maybe look, we if we somehow manage to win the league this season with the lack of depth in our squad, then it would be a miracle. We, we are a couple of injuries away from being a, a different football team. And I, I'm, I'm being hopeful in the fact that that might not happen. But we really, really need this first 11 to stay fit. And we're not equipped to deal with the Charter Challenge given the, the quality of our other clubs around us. But we are top of the league after 10 games. So I don't know. You go figure. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I mean, well, look, yeah. Oh, are we looking at the table? When do you look at the table? Probably after 10 yeah. games is what they seem to say, yeah. isn't it? 
Yeah, there's, only, there's only one way to decide who the best team in the league is currently, and that's to look at the league table. The bitch don't lie. Mm. Ben Bowman says, uh, Chelsea, then Wolves, then Villa, then City, then West Ham is our next five. That's tough. Okay, so tough. in terms of uh, Tottenham, a couple of good comments here. Devang GG, how many games does Ange suddenly need to lose to get the chop? Um, well, in the Premier League, you're never more than eight games on the bounce without getting the chop. Imagine that. Wow. Man, just that's really, I didn't want that in my psyche because I'm not, I'm still suffering from the horrors, the PTSD of many, many years of being a Spurs fan. Mm. So when you say something like that to someone like me, bear in mind it will have a fucking impact. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I'm just, yeah. Needs to be a bit more vigilant. Conor McLean said, new bit idea rival fans coming up with ways to cope with Spurs being top of the league. I saw someone on social media say Spurs have only beaten teams below them, which is obviously hilarious because every team is below them when you're first. <laughs> Everyone is, yeah. And this this is really interesting. Okay. So this is MT9642. As a Man City fan, I quite like Spurs being at the top. From what I've witnessed, watching the Premier League all my life, being top of the league gets heavier the longer you're up there. And the weight really starts to build up. We saw it with Arsenal, and even when Man City are at the top in the last few game weeks, we see signs of a crumble, even if we hold strong. Spurs are loving the view. We know how nice it looks up there, but... Oh, and then I screenshotted that and didn't click read more. But I will never know. But something. Does it, is it getting heavier? It's getting a little bit heavier, isn't it? Week on week. You can I, feel I, it. You feel it. Yeah, um, and, and it's not, it's because obviously no one can, you can't continue this throughout an entire season. Obviously, you can't. <laughs> but the, um, yeah, of course, every nah. game just feels like, oh, it'd be good to watch. It, 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 it's like, no, I know it's like, obviously, this has been an incredible start, but <laughs> I mean, effectively, we, we could beat Chelsea. So, you know, and they're not doing very well. And, you know, we beat them last year and we were proper shit last year. So we could beat them. And then if you beat them, then you're like, well, we could beat Villa at home. Villa are great. They're great, right? But yeah, we could beat good. anyone at home. We're great. So who, and then, and then your brain starts going into fundamental. And, and, and the reality is, is in order for this to stop, we have to get beat a couple of times and no one wants to face that. So yeah, but no one, there isn't anybody out there thinking Tottenham will win the league legitimately at this stage. That was, I think that's my, <laughs> that last pause is my favorite pause I think we've ever I've ever done in any kind of content creation. <laughs> I fucking loved it, mate. I would love you to win the league. No, that's not. That's no, not. That's not. Don't. Okay. Don't. I'm yeah. just. You know what? Fundamentally, it doesn't matter because I've never been happier being a Spurs fan, and it's nothing to do with our league t- league, league position. That's it's such a gr- great phrase. Wait, sorry, sorry, I did it again. I've got to stop talking over you. Fucking hell. No, it's fine. It, it's just everything to do with what the environment that Ange Postacoglu has created at Tottenham. It is fun. It's enjoyable. And it goes down to it comes down to press conferences, to watching us play, to results, and to looking at the team, the, 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 the Premier League table. It's, it, at the moment, it's just wonderful, every part of it. And I would say, can I just have a special nod? Under-21s, top of the league. Under-18s, also top of the league. Playing the same football. Similar, right. not not exactly the same formation. You don't know. Similar. We've got, <laughs> we've got. No, no, I do know. I do. Yeah. I did. I did a whole podcast yeah, right, with uh, Ben Bowman in the in the comments. Hey, who we like, Ben Bowman? Yeah, we've got, he, he gave him a little. Watch out! For, throw him a ball up, would you? And he just take it, wouldn't he? Just run with it. Lovely. Yeah, mate, go run. Watch, watch out for Mikey Moore. He's always saying. Okay. Mikey Moore under 18. Well, he's. I think he's under twenty one sometimes as well. Do you know, you said it there and I was thinking that's such a football fan thing to say. And um, like the sort of could they, could we? Actually, at some point, if you get to March, you go, you, you could win this. Don't. <laughs> don't is such a... Don't, like, don't go know, over the line. No, as in like, don't. no when, when you're going, don't. I think you could do it. Don't. As in like, don't put that in my mind. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like the sort of, yeah. oh, because I'm of course I'm thinking about it. But don't yeah. don't Leave let me, me have it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, don't really need to be reinforced. Well. No, I understand. You don't. You don't. I'm. I. This it exists in my brain. But I, I, the fact that someone else is reinforcing it all makes almost makes the weight 
unburdenable. Yeah, it's like don't, I don't need. Is a word. Yeah. I don't need. I don't. It's like I don't want like, all of like, like, other fans. I know the point of this is that other, you know, punditry and they talk about your football club. Oh, they're playing great football. And we love Ange. Like, f- everyone can just fuck off. Just let us play. Don't speak about us. That's what I feel at the moment. Let us. Let us, let us cook. Let us cook. Just let me cook. Uh, right. Uh, finally, epic reframe. Very quickly. Uh, Will Bat says, Angie's currently on the exact same record in the league as Ollie's first 10 games at United. Eight wins, two draws. Not his first 17 games in all comps. He won 14, drew two and lost one, which was the first leg in a tie against PSG that United ultimately won with victories against the likes of PSG, Chelsea, Spurs and Arsenal. Ollie went in to an underperforming club, starved of exciting football by a miserable manager before him and just let the boys play. With the experience of winning in the Norwegian league, ranked very similarly to the Japanese and Scottish leagues and much higher <laughs> than good. the Australian league. Do you think Ange's nice guy says the right thing personality will hold up when things get tough? As this was a huge part of why Oli initially won over the fans and temporarily succeeded but it's also what ultimately led to Ollie losing control of the dressing room and completely failing at Man United. Something that Ranier very, identified very and Ten Hag is still struggling to fix. Very good. That good is good very, very good. I, I would say that, you know, maybe um, it was the ego of Manchester United's um, fans, maybe, or that the the club as a whole should have given him a greater opportunity to manage their football club. You uh, just thought, no, this, this little weird guy is not good enough to manage Manchester United. Um, uh, I would disagree on two that... fronts, you know. Two fronts. Yeah. First of all, Postacogli has a very clear style of play. What was what was Solskjaer's? Not really. Not really sure what that was. Second one, crucially, he's uh, uh, Ange has got a gear change in him. And coming back to what you said right at the start of the podcast, you are he's far more intimidating because he's bigger than you. Um, John just said Ange could literally eat Ollie if he, if he took <laughs> Yeah. If he took a fancy, I don't think they're comparable. I remember, I think I've said this in the podcast, I remember someone feeling like Martin Yole ate baby's fingers. And I feel like Ange Postacoglu has a similar sort of, sort of um, stature. I don't think he would eat baby's fingers, but uh, I do, uh, he's got a similar vibe. Also, if I wasn't, I didn't realise I had to actually compare Solskjaer to Ange Postacoglu, but, All right. but if, if I had to, then his body of work as a manager, regardless of... Yeah. The levels that they've managed at is 20 years deeper than Solskjaer. Um, tries talk, new bit. Stephen Tries, uh, regular listener, likes to chip <clears> in <throat> now and again. Um, he's, I don't know if he's starting beef or is, if this is a new bit. I don't want to put the pressure on Stephen because he's a busy man. But if he does listen, if you would like to review the podcast each week or just keep putting comments in because people know who you are and it's quite nice, isn't it? Um, he said uh, 11930, he's done it again. Flav clearly not paying attention. To the great figment chat. Uh, what was that? One sentence words. Yeah, and I watched it back. It was tough. It was tough to watch. And I think at the time I let it go. And then there was one later me, on. And what, I had to. Click I it. Let, me, let me see. I need to defend myself. Click on the number. Well, I can't click right, on it right yeah. now. It's a screenshot. Oh, right. I understand. But you, you can go back. Right. A new bit. A great man once <clears> said, <throat> What I would like is your phrases of great men that told, or women that told you great stuff. So last week, it takes no wipes to know it will take 20. It takes two to know it's in which is just superb. Uh, Lowell Meerkatz is back. He says, glad you enjoyed the wiping wisdom, guys. Love the pod. Another great man once said to me, after me telling him the same quote I told you, he said, any trip to the bog is a no wiper if you're brave enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I like it. Hopefully brave is the right way to describe someone who doesn't wipe their ass regardless of what happens oh, yeah there's a there's a ripple effect isn't there football yeah. assumptions i think it's got legs as well so get your great mm-hmm. phrases that you learn that you use in your life that's not just a direct quote it's something that someone said to you i would love to hear them i think that i think we could if we get enough we could make a book football assumptions jack p football assumptions when sterling trains he doesn't practice kicking the ball in any way he just sprints and squats <laughs> That's his assumption. <laughs> uh, Why squats? Why squats? Oh, yeah, I don't really get the squats. Yeah. I like it. It makes this, sense. This I don't good. know why. 72 Reese. Assumption of a footballer. Jordan Pickford has tomato sauce, ketchup on everything. <laughs> Turkey dinos, chips, a burger, in a pot noodle, <laughs> everything. Turkey dinos. That is spot on though. Jordan Pickford wants ketchup on everything. 
That is only hundred percent true. Yeah, yeah. He only eats beige food, doesn't he? Like yeah. pasties, chips, beer. He just anything beige he likes. Yeah, I've got a mate like that. Literally, pancakes. eats beige food. Can I have five pancakes for breakfast, please? Five. What do you want them? Five on gold on syrup. Five pancakes and syrup, please, for breakfast. Mm. I like a bit of red on it. Oh, a bit of, what, what red it's on the pancakes? Yeah. Sunderland. I can't really do okay, Sunderland's Peter Beardsley for me. That's the only. I know he's not from there, but that, that's the only accent I could do. Do we'll do it. Do it then. <laughs> I just give us a ketchup, Luke. <laughs> oh no! I just want. Like, uh, can you give us a ketchup? Ah, shocking! That's shite. Sorry. <laughs> Use the ketchup. Oh, I love ketchup. Me like. <laughs> That's terrible. Mm, it's quite tricky. Struggle. So uh, yeah, it's a softer. Sunderland surely a softer Newcastle accent. What was you? It? What you was going for? Sort of dialect. You was going for tone and and affection. Was you was trying to Newcastle. remove yourself from Newcastle <laughs> and actually have a Sunderland a accent. Different, you, a because I, I, no, I appreciate that. Sunderland. I understand. Sunderland. Anybody, Sunderland. Anybody out of outside of the North East would not be able to tell. It's just a oh, noise just to everybody that. else. Ah, I just love ketchup. Me. There you go. That was better. Yeah, that's the, uh, that. Uh, that's it. That's I it. just need a word to get into it sometimes. Oh, uh, I just nah. I just I just love ketchup. Me. <laughs> what do you think? The worst, can we do the worst accent in the UK, or is that just an open? Is that open but, a can of worms? Is, is people, it xenophobic? Not me, but people generally say Birmingham, don't they? But that's not me saying that. It's not me saying that. Well, my, I'm I'm half Brummy, so I can say whatever I like about Birmingham. Okay. What all? What all? Say about. Oh, right. my, my, my mum's uh, my mum's from Birmingham. Your mum's one. Uh, okay, yeah, my mum's one. The Alcott Horn, not quite a so. Okay, right. <laughs> so, <laughs> that led us to asking about different sounds that you hear. So when I so am this... just drifting off, I will often uh, make this sound. Ha! Huh. It's quite a satisfying thing. And people, <laughs> it turns out other people have got it. And actually, I'll come back, come back to the Alcott horn. But Luke sent me this. So uh, hopefully you can hear this. Here we go. Just watching the pods and I seen about noises that people make. Um, my cousin, for some reason, people in Plymouth say like bay as a um, term of endearment. And whenever he's eating, he just used to make loads of noises and just be like, mm. <laughs> By mm, mm. specifically in Mac and White, which um not sure why, but you know, only forwards and all that. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Luke. Much appreciated. So yeah, nice uh, Magnum more White. More of that. Um, yeah, more sounds like that. Send me a send me a voice note on Twitter. I'll um, you know pop it in. Uh, so yeah, Eve de Grieve. He said not quite. A, who's a patron? Might be in the uh, might be in here as well. And Aloe Vera, who's uh, one of our moist slugs. I'm about to read your story, by the way, mate. And I can't wait. Okay. Eve de Grief. Well, not quite a Jim Horn, but when me and my missus had been going out for about three months, one evening we were getting up to mischief and I go under the covers to perform my duties. The next thing I know, I'm getting a slap on the back of my head being told, wake up. As it turns out, I'd fallen asleep. And the way that she realised was when I let out a muffled. <laughs> I sort of skipped past muffled the first time I read this. Muffled. <laughs> a muffled, shall we take this to the bedroom? Whilst already being down there. <laughs> shall we take this? <laughs> shall we? Whilst already at the foot of the bed. Anyone can sleep talk, but can you sleep nosh? Good question. Well, there's there's a, there's a type of disorder called uh, sexomina, and it's people that engage in sexual behaviour when they're asleep. Oh no! It's linked. It's linked to. It's linked to sleepwalking. <laughs> That's horrible. So it could be that you could be capable of noshing someone off <laughs> in your sleep, and it could be again <laughs> that something you're not aware of. Right. Can you imagine that like, someone's so some bloke and his missus is sort of like she oh, starts really? oh, not again. <laughs> yeah, not or, again. Or, or you're sort of trying you're trying to like catch you're trying to catch it. <laughs> <laughs> She's sort of somewhere in the corner of the room just, and he's trying to like <laughs> he's trying to catch it. 
You mean she's in the room, she's in the corner room somewhere? Yeah, he's trying to catch the catch the not- air. She's just going like that. <laughs> he's just trying to catch the catch the hand job. <laughs> no, I think it, I think it requires another person to be in the vicinity. They're not just doing hand like right. a, giving, giving the air a hand job. Oh, okay. Right. It's like you'd wake up and oh. Again, for Christ's sake! Fuck, will you just count? All right, if you must. Is that possible to like actually just wait? <laughs> imagine, imagine that. So, 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 someone's just like oh, fully asleep, and then they go, "Huh? Oh, <laughs> and they've, they've actually just <laughs> orgasm." Sorry, I've just, yeah. just... <laughs> Sorry, I've just come. <laughs> oh, I appear to have just come. Right, sweet spots. Finish off with that, and the great story. So first of all, sweet spot in the south spot. Uh, we have them. We have the megapixels. Sweet spot. Now, I've, 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 this is the worst sweet spot I've ever read. I'll be honest. Okay. I don't think you've got it. Um, or you're sort of trying to flex. I don't know. If, if you give your review on this. I spent the better part of last week pretty ill. Day spent in bed, sleeping for 12 hours at a time, completely knocked out. Once I emerged out the other side, I assessed my surroundings. My flat was a disgrace, having been neglected for a week. So I deep cleaned the whole place, put on new sheets, got some healthy food in. I felt on top of the world, sat in my now clean flat, having conquered being ill. What, is that it? Yeah, that's it. I mean, you spent... I mean... (laughs) You thought that, oh, I'm definitely going to send this one in. They'll love that, the boys. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Not good layer, enough. Yeah, cleaning chat. You're basically going, look at how fucking good I am. Was yeah. I ill? And then I tidied my flat. You're not eight years old. That's what you're supposed to do as an adult. Keep. And what was you? What was happening during your <laughs> week being in bed that meant that the place was a shithole? Maybe it was tissues and stuff like that. I don't know. But yeah. the. Uh, but like... no, not not having that. No, yeah. Well, where, could you just refer to the podcast where we have cleaning up chat? And healthy food chat. <laughs> like, I don't think that's no, yeah. a couple no, of topics. Just, we, uh, yeah. Sat down with my chai latte and my fucking Adami beans, or whatever they're called. <laughs> I'm just sh- sh- shoving fucking Adami beans. black beans up my ass. <laughs> pulses. I'm just existing in pulses today. I've been pulses all over my cock. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's um, that feels prime for the out of context Twitter account, doesn't it? Right, <clears throat> and we finish off with ten aloe vera. Are you here, aloe vera? Yeah, he's he is. Here. He's here. Great. I I love this story, and I love that you wrote this. This is brilliant. Okay, just checking in, listening to the sweet spot about Clarks. So for those of you around the world who don't have a Clarks, in the UK there's a shoe shop called. Clarks and it's generally when you're a kid where you go to get your school shoes and when well, you are a kid different um some well Flav was saying that he would never got to use the machine there's basically a machine that you can that goes and then it will measure your feet and it was always quite exciting Flav didn't have that sadly um, yeah, a manual one but it was good someone messaged me that saying that that they like in the 80s or something they had a Clarks machine and it would x-ray your foot and actually, they got sued by several people for it, apparently. don't know why. Oh. Anyway. anyway, so that's that's Clark's for you. Okay, I just want to set the scene. And we were saying that a bit of a sweet spot is that moment where you get to measure your feet. And yeah, they've got bigger. Great. Okay. So listening to a sweet spot about Clark's made me sick in my mouth just a little. It reminded me of a particularly bad experience just a few months ago. Wed- so I had a wedding Saturday, traveling up Friday, and obviously buying the suit on late night shopping Thursday. Suit acquired, shirt and tie acquired, and just a pair of shoes to finish off the look. Being a shorter lad with small, wide feet, shoes are always an issue. I go into all the usual suspects, shoe, office, M&S, etc., but nothing. Then the missus points out Clark's and said she would, she, we should give that a go. I find a pair I like, but only one guy serving who's in his mid-twenties, similar age to myself, and he's already with another customer. So I hold tight, as I realise this might be my final option. Finally, he gets over to us after about 15 minutes and asks what size I want. I said, I usually get a seven or six and a half, depending on the shoe. 
And so the guy then goes, do you want me to measure them first? The weighing up began. Do I want a bloke my age touching my little hobbit feet? Or will it be a glorious experience like the slug from last week who found out that his feet had grown? I agreed to get my feet measured. So after the light foot massage <laughs> and about a minute of awkwardness, he looks up with a grin and says, you're a five and a half. We only go down to six in here, mate. <laughs> after a little giggle from my missus, oh, don't need that. You've got size five and a half feet as a man. <laughs> Is that what he said? Yeah. He said, you're, you're a five and a half, mate. We only go down to six in here. After a little giggle from my missus, the other customers and... So, not just the missus, the other customers and the bloke in Clark's, we left and I ended up buying a pair of size six school shoes in next from the kids section. <laughs> never, never again. Tough. <laughs> Tough. I mean, all I would say is you've got a hero in Salabaslai who uh, has size seven feet also. I've got a mate um, who's got a size six feet. He says they're defo six at least. Well, I mean, <laughs> what, are you, what are you calling um, calling Clark's measuring machine a liar? Why is I, it, why uh, does it matter? Why do we care about things like this? Why does it matter if you've got small feet or not? Yeah, well, it's, as a human being, you're supposed. I mean, you're pre predetermined or pre built to laugh at something that's abnormal, aren't you? You shouldn't. You should be able to turn the cheek. You should be able to feel like you're an elevated, um, ethereal being who cannot look at someone else's ailment and make fun of it. But fundamentally, <laughs> instinctual creatures, you look at... <laughs> All right, it's not an ailment. It's, it's a... I mean, what would you call it? Disability? <laughs> so a man with five foot five, five, five point five feet? I mean... I don't know. Do you struggle with... Do you have better balance or worse balance? Smaller feet. Jose Schiller had size six feet. What? He was a goalie, wasn't he? Six feet. When, when, when you're upstairs and your missus is downstairs, does it sound like a toddler is running around upstairs? <laughs> is, that what it, is that what it's like? Ah, oh, he's a bloody... He's a moist slug, man. That's tough. I just... I know. It's a funny one, isn't it? I mean, I've got tiny hands. Tiny hands. Tiny hands, <laughs> Pringles with fingers. He feels he feels targeted. So, well, you know, look, here you go. Oh, a bit of camaraderie from the... the moist slugs. I went to a Clark's a couple of years ago. This is John. And uh, I'm a size 10 with every other shoe. Their shoes I had go down to a size 8. A slow humiliation. It was, it was traumatized. Or maybe, yeah, God, that's horrible, isn't it? I'm a 10. Oh, 10. well, they seem a bit big for you. Okay, maybe a 9. No. <laughs> 8. There's nothing wrong with an eight. I'm an eight. Eight and a half. Mm. If I may, chuck that on. Um, how tall are you? How tall am I? Look, no, oh, out of here. Yeah, I would like to know that. Curious. I would also like to know in the comments, maybe well, moments yeah, of emasculation would be great. Things like that would be funny. You know, it's a safe space here. Despite Flav claiming it's possible it's like disability that. to have five and a half feet. Yeah. Like when, when, when he's running upstairs to bed. He's really excited for bed. He just brushed his teeth and brushed his hair, <laughs> and his little feet just go. Just does it, yeah. It just oh, sound, that's, this is what he sounds like as he's as he's, just, run, as he's running up the stairs. Just sounds like a keyboard. <laughs> is that it? Just sounds like that. I think it's more like this. It's like on the floorboards like that. And he's just so excited to get into bed, and he jumps in, get like, all tucked in like that. Five eight he says. Five eight. Eight. Five, I don't. Eight. I mean. So, and, and the small the small feet running the family? <laughs> I think we should end the pod. This feels harsh. The, um, it, it, no, no, hang on a minute. There's very little we can make fun of in this world. Yeah. No one has mentioned small feet ever. This is the first time. We found something that can be made fun of without us being cancelled. Is that fair? Well, let's talk small about the feet. elephant in the room here. Now, there's a suggestion maybe that this could lead to other things being small. Now, <laughs> yeah. I played football with a guy who was five foot three... <laughs> He just, yeah, we've all got trotters. <laughs> <laughs> I used to play football with guys five foot three, and his feet was de size six tops. Mm. And pff, good grief, my friend was packing. My friend was packing. So, so I, there was a kid nonsense. at school. It's nonsense. I might, I might have mentioned it before. 
He was about five six. His feet have got. I don't. I never noticed his feet. So, um, but you know, it's. I can't comment on the size of feet, but by God, did I notice his cock? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Like we, we had a it we had a horrible moment. Insane. We had a horrible moment where I sort of did. I did. Um, wasn't. I just wasn't expecting it. And so, um, you know, you start to get changed or whatever, and, and out it comes. And especially, you know, guys, you know, five, he's about five foot three. And I, and I sort of went, I did that face, didn't even think about it. And then, and then looked up, and we both looked at each other. And, yeah. I, and what I could have done yeah. to save it, I could have gone, I could have acknowledged it, just gone there. I actually just went, <laughs> You should have gone, fair play. I should have gone, hey, <laughs> nice. <laughs> I should have gone, hey, no. nice. Hey, hey. <laughs> you i see you. nice hey yeah i see you yeah, clive I, right I'm not, i acknowledge you uh if you would like to join us on our weekly mailbags for less than a london pint we are moving i think we're getting closer to 600 now we've got what? a lovely little community there and we have a nice proper chat with our chat every single week on that and we talk about all sorts all sorts so come and join us and they're also very importantly there are now i think 129 mailbags and you can watch all of them uh, oh, no. yeah so yeah get involved and uh, have a great weekend and uh, cheers, we'll see you all soon cheers bye bye <laughs>